Hello people the web YouTube TV care, welcome back to Hack Time! Whoa! So okay guys, welcome back to another SDR tutorial video. Now in today's tutorial video, I'm gonna be using the same SDR dongle that I've been using since my last um, previous two or three SDR tutorial videos. Now with that in mind, just if you're gonna use this adapter, you're gonna need a few other adapters to well connect this thing up to a coax cable which you're gonna need in order to well pick up NOAA satellites or Meteor M2 satellites just because the standard little antenna that comes with this guy is not powerful enough to well receive those transmissions and well with that said you're gonna need an MCX to well SMA cable and then you're gonna need an SMA cable to well coax adapter and I will list all these parts down below as well as to where you can get them and with that said just keep in mind some um, SDR dongles are already equipped with a well co coax connector then the to be honest, those are probably better to use than this um, SDR device, but I'm trying to stick with cheap parts to do this. Just because if you don't really want to get into the hobby, but just want to like tinker with it, this will only come out to about, um, I don't know, maybe 13 bucks in total just for the adapters and the SDR dongle. And you can make an antenna pretty much out of anything, to be honest, for really cheap. The antenna that I got here, I just found some old coax cabling and then I built an antenna using nothing more than soda tabs and believe me or not this actually works I'll pop up some videos or a recording that I did of me using this thing just keep in mind if you want to do make an antenna like this you're gonna want to invest in a soldering iron because I did not use a soldering tool at all for this I just used hot glue and if you use hot glue you're gonna have mixed well frequencies if you happen to tap near this or whatever you may notice a spike in your readings but yeah with that said to actually pick up a NOAA satellite or a Meteor M2 satellite it's fairly simple all you're gonna need is a QHF antenna you can either google how to make one of these and I highly recommend that you try to make that antenna first before you do the method that I'm about to show you because this way the QHF antenna is a lot better than the way that I've been doing it. I've been just using a standard pair of, well, rabbit ears, essentially the same kind of antenna that you'd find on a radio like this. I'd extend them out to about, well, 20 inches or so, and then I'd hook those up to a coax cable, then lead everything into my SDR dongle. And that seems to pick up satellites fairly well. Just know if you plan to do too well, pick up a satellite this way you're gonna need your rabbit ears facing at north to south or else you won't be able to get a signal at all doing this method and the same thing goes for my aluminum um soda tab antenna you want to have it facing north and south in order to get the best well reception or so to say at least where i live in florida now keep in mind some satellites do different things as they pass through space just most of the no ones, they go north to south, and if you set up your antenna that way, you'll get a good clear image every time. But yeah, with that said, enough antenna theory and antenna talk out of the way. Let's just get to the software side of things, shall we? So okay guys, now that I'm on the computer, you're going to want to download three programs. Now these three programs are Orbitron, SDR Sharp, and Wix2 Image. Now, I'm not going to go over each of these programs in depth, because a few of them need a lot of setup before you can use them, so I'm just going to use them as is, as I already have them set up. But just know, if you need any help, I will gladly help you out down below in the comments. But yeah, with that said, first of all, you're going to want to open up Orbitron and track the satellites. Now, keep in mind, this is a web-based app, although once you got everything downloaded, you don't have to connect it ever again up to the internet. Just know, over many, many years, this will slowly um, start to, well, desync with the satellites, so they won't be in the same places as they originally are. But yeah, with that said, you want to get Orbitron, set it up, load in the TLE for NOAA satellites, and once you got that loaded, you're gonna wanna find either NOAA 15, 19, or 18, as of these are the only three NOAA satellites that amateurs such as you or me 
can pick up legally and, well, without needing to, well, do much to, well, decode the image, but yeah, with that said, these are the only three satellites we will be able to decode, and, well, all you gotta do from here is wait till when the satellite's just about to pass overhead, and if it starts to pass overhead, Orbitron will make a slight little beep noise to alert you that, hey, a satellite is right above you right now. And with that said, if you plan on using the, um, fee dipole method of antennas, you just want to keep this in mind. You want to wait till about when the satellite reaches mid-circle here on the little map, because if you don't wait till it's about overhead, you're not going to be able to pick it up really well. And when you're using a V-Dipole setup, it has to be overhead in order for you to pick up the image. But if you're using a QHF antenna, you should be able to pick up everything in this whole radius just fine. Just know if you're using a V-Dipole kind of setup, you might only be able to pick up things from pretty much here to here in this little radar. At least from my testing, that's all I've been able to get. But then again, I've been running my software and antennas indoors, which is probably a big no-no, and I'll probably set something up on my roof one of these days. But yeah, with that said, once you've got Orbitron all set up, you just wait for a satellite to pass overhead. And to, well, get the frequency of the said satellite, all you have to really do is type in NOAA, like 15 frequency, and then you just find the frequency of the satellite. In this case, NOAA 15 is about, um, oh god, it just saw it, then it went away, is about, um, 137.65, I think. Yeah, it's 137.62, so what you want to do is you want to navigate to that frequency within, um, SDR sharp, and you're gonna want to zoom in and make sure that you have WFM selected, and then from there, you're gonna want to narrow the bandwidth down to about 34, 32 ish. Although the signal is only about like maybe 24 bandwidth wide or whatever that's called. So keep that in mind. When you get a good pass over, I'll flash over a video now of what that kind of looks like. You will see these kind of, um, not necessarily pings, but these bloops pop up, and it will sound like a metronome going back and forth. And if you get a good stink signal strength, that should be the only thing that you hear. And once you start to get that signal, you can either choose to, well, scroll down within SDR sharp and hit record audio, or you can just download Wix to image and then set that up to use a virtual audio cable or your Windows, well, stereo mix device. Or you can just set it to pick up through your speaker, I believe, but that will be very annoying as of when you hear sound coming through this. It will also play through your speakers and into this, which kind of sucks and you have to have your computer up pretty loud for that to work. But yeah, with that said, all you have to really do is go under Mixer Control, select your audio device, in my case it would be Line 2, but if I were to select that now, I'd kind of, well, you know, I'd kind of, like, probably break my microphone probably right now, but yeah, if I were to hit record on this now and manual test, you should see, um, my audio from my microphone coming in down here, essentially, to get Wix2 image set up with SDR Sharp, all you gotta do is make sure that your audio is being loaded into SDR Sharp, and if you have everything set up right, an image should start to load in as you're listening to the satellite, which is pretty cool. But then again, if you don't want to do that and you kind of want to automate everything, it might be just better to record the audio from SDR Sharp and then load it directly into... Wix to image, which is actually fairly easy to do. All you have to really do is hit open audio file, navigate to the audio file, and then it would just start decoding the image. Which isn't too hard, but just keep this in mind. If you do it that way, you'll want to wait to exactly when you hear the noise go off before you hit record, or else you'll get a bunch of useless static before the actual image ever appears.
But yeah guys, that's pretty much it, and well, with that said, if you plan on using a V-Dipole kind of setup, just keep in mind that whenever you receive the image, it will only be about wherever you're located. In my case, since I live in Florida, all I've been able to pick up is, well, the peninsula of Florida. Other than that, every time I try to go out any farther with it, I kind of start to lose the image, so just keep that in mind. If you plan on using a... Uh, v dipole setup you're not going to get the largest image available although you should be able to get all the image channels including color if available black and white infrared you know all the good things you should be able to pick up with a v dipole setup but if you want to maximize your experience while doing this you will want to get a qhf antenna and i'm probably never going to make a video on me while making one of those but yeah, like I said, if you wish to see a video on how I made this, let me know and I'll gladly do it. Maybe I'll actually solder it for once, considering this one isn't soldered, it's just hot glued together. This actually worked out pretty damn good, and you can hang it anywhere. If you want to hang it on a flag post and then just, like, pull the flag, the rope to get it up there, this would work really well. I've actually been able to pick up more airplanes with this than I have actually with my real v dipole setup. And it, I don't know how exactly that works considering these have less resistance to them and everything and I can freely move them. But whatever, anyway, enough uh, antenna talk aside guys, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Forgive me if I had like a hard time kind of explaining things, well, there's just a whole lot to go over when you talk about this kind of stuff and if you wish to see a part 2 or maybe see another video where I talk about things a little bit more in depth, let me know and I'll gladly do it, but for now guys, I'm going to leave today's video off here on, well, how to pull an image from a satellite. And with that said, yeah, I'm going to leave the video off here. DTBK signing off. Peace. If you look over here, just click on 3 in this panel, and then hit connect, and every I feel like I harvested like 20 carrots. And let's we just like combine them into one giant...